Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Now we're really getting into the depths of December. We are trying something very Christmassy themed. We're playing a Snow Depths build. Now I played a very similar build last year and we managed a positive record with it, which was just incredible. Uh, I don't think we're going to manage it this time because the meta has shifted, but I want to see how much it's shifted in terms of how this deck plays. So we are a Dark Depths deck. So we copy it with Vespin Stage. That makes a 2020. We have Exploration to power this out quickly. Now, that's not the only way we get to make a 2020, because we are playing Marit Lage's Slumber. This is a two-mana legendary snow enchantment. Whenever this card or another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control ten or more snow permanents, sacrifice this and make a Marit Lage. So this was a card that wasn't supposed to be very good in our deck we we're playing it as a bit of a meme thing but it ended up being really good we were getting like one or two scries every single turn so it's kind of like search rise counter which used to be good enough for legacy so it's kind of playing a card that isn't quite good enough but you know it gives a reasonable account for itself and it's blue so it pitches the force of well so that, that's basically our win condition we have marriage slumber and dark depths now We've got some Brainstorms and Force of Wheels to kind of tide us over and get us through. We've got some On Thin Ice for removal of creatures. There's a lot of creatures, so I'm quite happy to have four of these. This is also a Snow Permanent, so it's going to interact with what we're doing here. Then we have Frost Auger. So this is a 1 mana 1 to pay 1 Snow Mana, tap it, look at the top card of the library. If it's a Snow card, you may reveal it and put it into your hand. So this can be a little draw engine that also doesn't draw cards, which is important because Orcish Bow Masters exists. This was fine last year when I played the deck, but not exceptional, but I think we're going to try it again and see how it feels. And Ice Fang Coatle. This, Coatle, sorry. this used to be a, you know, staple in Legacy. And now it's basically disappeared because it's a 1-1, one, one, so it dies to Bowmasters, it draws you a card, so it's very bad against enemy Bowmasters, and you really need to have good reasons to play this. So the reason we're playing it, obviously, is a snow creature that lets us counter it through our deck a little bit, and it can be removed when we need it. So we're going to live and die by the Bowmasters, this one, I think. We also have some card advantage in the form of Life from the Loam, so we can keep rebuying our fetch hands and powering out more and more of our snow-covered lands, which we have one Arctic Tree Line, one Glacial Floodplain, and one Rhinewood Fall, so we have the ones we can fetch tapped, but they are both uh, land types. We have one Wasteland that we can keep rebuying with our Life from the Loam, which is interesting. So we can, we didn't have this last time, so this technology allows us to sort of low, uh, waste and lock people a little bit, which is something I'm always happy to do. And the other card advantage engine we have here uh, is Glacial Revelation. Three mana, reveal the top six cards of your library. You may put any number of snow permanent cards from among them into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard. So this can draw us a lot of cards and put things like Life from the Loam in the graveyard. So like you'll draw this or this, this, this. Obviously Dark Depths is a snow permanent as well. So it can draw a lot of cards. I think on average we are drawing three cards with it for three mana, which is a perfectly acceptable rate even by legacy standards, I would say. And yeah, that's the main deck really. We are, you know, not the most impressive deck necessarily, but we can do turn two Merit Lage with Dark Depths and Exploration Desmond Stage. So, you know, that's pretty sweet. We've got a reasonable amount of card advantage. We've got some interaction in the deck. Um, I was tempted to try and squeeze in black so I could play Dead of Winter, at least as a sideboard card, which is two and a black sorcery. All creatures get minus X, minus X, where X is the number of snow permanents you control. However, um, I didn't really feel comfortable squeezing black into this mana base just yet, and I wanted to have another go with it. As it is, more or less, we've just sort of added the wasteland and tweaked the sideboard a little bit. Speaking of sideboard, four pieces of graveyard hate, four creature removal spells. So this is uh, two mana, enchant a creature, it gets tapped, it doesn't untap. So this is a snow enchantment. We don't really have instant speed removal. That could definitely come back to bite us. But this is what we're working with. We're really leaning into the theme here. It is Christmas after all, let's make it snow. Uh, we have four Force of Negation to try and help beat up on some of these combo decks. And we also have some Force of Vigors to try and blow up artifacts. And that's kind of where we're going. We're leaning on our Force of Wills helping us out a fair bit, along with just, you know, some efficient removal and maybe just getting to do our thing is good enough. Hopefully we can waste and lock someone. You know, we've got various lines in this deck. 
I did think about playing, there's a three mana tutor, which tutors for a, a legendary creature, a snow permanent, I think, sorry, I think it's legendary permanent, snow permanent, or a saga. Uh, for three mana, and you gain life equal to the amount of snow mana put into it when you cast it. So it's not great. But I was thinking we could have that and have one copy of Uro. So that could be a thing we can go and find. But I'm not sure if we want to do that. But I'm going to be keeping that in my mind while we're playing the league. And maybe we can make some alterations at the end. Alright, so that's it. Let's uh, get into a very festive Merit Leisure Slumber. And see if we can put some... 2020 wins on the board with this janky enchantment right like and subscribe and let's jam if you're looking to play legacy on mtgo like me why not try card hoarder they're a rental service that i personally use and i found them better than other rental services that i've used in the past so why not give them a try so our opening hand is requiring a lot of work from our brainstorms here but brainstorm is a powerful card and we do get to turn to glacial reservation so i think this is acceptable I'd feel more comfortable on the play because at least we could reach for uh, Brainstorm early on. We're not going to be able to Brainstorm till our opponent's had a turn. Alright, so our opponent's leading off on Once Upon a Time. So this is probably looking like Cradle Control. That's the best deck that runs Once Upon a Time. You don't really see the Naya initiative anymore. Throwing in Catacombs. And they're playing their Catacombs. Alright. Ice Fang is interesting, but I do think we just want to get our exploration down. Now, do we want an emergency brainstorm here? Or do we want to just play our land tapped? I think we're just going to play our land tapped. Just get it out of the way with. Next turn we can Glacial Revelation and then do some other bits and pieces. The way our opponents started this game makes me think that we're not looking at a deck that's going to be, you know, powering out super scary stuff super early. It's going to be sort of in the fair cradle control mavericky ballpark. So they're going to have time to grind. There's a wasteland, all right. I don't think they want to start that against our exploration deck. Maybe they do. Now, if they're wastelanding now, we do get to use this mana in whichever way we see fit here. I think I'll probably fire off a brainstorm here. Looking for another land. All right. There's some interesting permanent. Um, I think we put these two on top. And we draw one of them. Then we can waste sand our opponent with their mana source here. Alright. Do anything with that white mana? So they might have a plow. And then we'll play this. We'll go and get ourselves a basic island, I think. And just get an ice fang on the go. Alright. And the thing we shuffled away came back. Interesting. Yeah, they've had enough. Uh, <laughs> wasteland too good. That one wasteland we added. Made a big difference there. So I'm expecting like Maverick style deck here. So I think we're going to want more creature removal. How do we fit in more creature removal? Are we just boarding out Force of Wills? I don't think so. They could be running things like Natural Order, which is definitely a target we need to be saying no to with Forces. We have a lot of card advantage. So our Forces are actually pretty decent. I like the life from the Loam here. Let's get rid of Frost Augers. Maybe we're getting rid of Frost Augers. They're not that exciting, are they? Like, we're obviously not getting rid of Marrow Legion Slumber because that's kind of like our jam here. Um, I could trim on Loam and keep an Augur. I don't think I'd trim on Revelation. I think Revelation's too good. This way we have five turn one plays that we can just play regardless and they're fine. All right, our opening hand for the second game is not a Keeper. This is no lands. Let's Mulligan. Okay, I like this one. We have some of the engine stuff that we want to do. Can we probably throw back a flooded strand here? We've got creature removal, we've got some ramp, we've got glacial revelation, which can do an awful lot of work for us. I think we want to play on basics here. So I will be fetching the forest. So next turn we can use our wasteland for a glacial revelation and play some more permanents. Or we can jam this ice fang. We've got options. This feels like an Orcish Bowmasters in our future, but we don't really care about that one. Obviously pretty good against our Ice Fang. Um, let's crack this. Then we go and get probably another island here. Let's see if we can draw six cards. 
All right, we'll draw four cards. I will take that for three mana. This also includes our snow-covered plains. So this might make our opponent think about things like plow, although jokes on them, we're not running plow. Who needs plow when you have Merit Lady's slumber or something? It is annoying they get to do Bowmaster stuff here. All right, no fear of our wasteland. Yep, here's the Bowmaster. The other option here we had here was just to wait and play the Ice Fang in response, but then we just draw a card off it and then it dies to Bowmasters. But we do have an on thin ice, so maybe we can get some purchase with that. We have one of each non basic, so it's going to be hard for us to take them off of their colours here. They grist the Hunger Tide. This is a little bit trickier for us to answer. But we do get to draw some cards and make some flyers. We certainly get to make some flyers. Right, on thin ice. Goodbye, Bowmasters. Draw a card with Ice Fang. A brainstorm. Uh, I am interested in casting this brainstorm, I think. We haven't played any lands yet. Um, okay. We have two lands we can play. They really help us with the other stuff. Uh, I guess we put Ice Fang on top and then Thin Ice. And then I think we... Are we wasteland our opponent here? I guess we're a little bit worried of Natural Order. Sure, we'll take out one of their black sources. Right, so we have a Death Touch. That's good. But they only have 1-1s, one so that would trade anyway. And it's better off being pointed at our opponent's Grist here. I don't really want to use this Force of Will just yet. Because if we can get our Merit Lady Slumber online, that can do some work. Swords to Plowshares. Yep, that's fine. We'll take a little bit of damage here. So the top card of our library is an Ice Fang. After we draw this onto Ice. Alright, let's play into this horrible thing that I suspect is coming our way. There's another Bowmasters. This is where they flash in a Bowmaster. They did not have the Bowmasters. Okay. That's acceptable. Let's start cooking with this. We're not a million miles away from this going off. Brainstorm is pretty high impact as a card. Sure, I'll have that on top. Alright, we will not trade here. We can pitch an Ice Fang to Force of Will if we need to. Right, it's going to keep making little friends. Sure, we don't care about that one. Try an Arbor as well. Just making lots of little guys. I see. Brainstorm. They got a Bowmaster, and we can do something about it. Glacial Revelation. I'm certainly into that. Um, keep these two. I think we're probably going to find land. And then I guess we get rid of the Winter's Rest. I think we're going to tap in these. Let's draw some more cards. We'll get rid of this because this gives them potential mana. Um, let's put it on the bottom. I was really hoping to hit some mana there. but We have eight snow permanents. Uh, how many creatures they have? Two. They can demos for two with that. Um, I guess the plan here is we actually do need to start trading with our Ice Fang. This is where the Dead of Winter plan would have been real good. Winter's resting our opponent's stuff isn't amazing because they have a Grist, they can just sacrifice them anyway. Uh, yeah. We can easily get two Snow Permanents into play next turn. And if they have an answer to Merit Lager's Slumber, we can then just play the other one. So we can keep this back and use a Winter's Rest to pitch to the Force. And then use these three Permanents as our ones to get us up to 10. I guess we block the Orc here. I still have natural order mana, even though we took their other thing out, but we've got to do what we can do here. Now, we have our natural order covered. It only costs us one life. It's been the worst. Right, maybe we should be pitching the Merit Lager Slumber instead of the Winter's Rest, but I do quite like the idea of being able to play another 2020. But is this game going to go long enough that that's relevant? I guess if they plow our guy. Uh, X equals 2. I don't like this. Right, we'll get rid of this. Okay. And we'll lead off on this so we draw more cards, have a better idea what we're doing with our turn. Uh, so we stack it so we get to scry first. Um, do I want another land? 
Yes, I think I do. So we can play this. We can scry. Right, we didn't really want that one. On thin ice on this one. Let's go with the dried arbor. Get a little scry in. No, we don't need that one just yet. Or at all. So we can copy a snow land if we're worried about this guy dying. Or we can just play a winter's rest and buy ourselves a little bit more time. We can also go and get a land with our flooded strand here. But we just want to get our... Yes, please. I would love that. So we have a different way of making it in 2020. Okay. So how many creatures in their graveyard now? One, two, three. So not quite lethal. But they will kill us on the turn after. All right. Sacrifice one of their guys. That's good news for us. One, two, three creatures. So if we crack this, hmm, we lose our Dark Depths if we crack this. We can make a Dark Depths without having to crack that. Uh, what is this doing? Just any guy. But this guy doesn't have power. So we're not, strictly speaking, dead. As long as we don't crack this. We're not going to let this go. Because we know the top card of our library is Dark Depths. Uh, bottom of library is fine. Uh, we know our opponent's running Wasteland. So we dodge Wasteland by doing this in our opponent's upkeep. This way if they want to plough it, it's going to be on their turn with their mana. So that one mana they had left. If they plough this, it buys us a lot of time. Alright, this is enough, isn't it, to kill us. They saw the line. Oh wait, they had another one in there as well I missed. Alright. Oh yeah, the Dried Arbor is a... The dried eye was exiled. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We did not have a great time there. Um, I kind of want this life in the loam now, I'm thinking about it. I'd rather have that than a frost auger. Although, being a 1 2 in this matchup is weirdly good. It stops all like, the little guy beat down. Maybe we want the little guys instead of the Winter's Rest here. Winter's Rest is good against Fiend Artisan and a few other little bits and pieces. But they can just tap. A mother of runes at some point and get rid of them. So then we're going to bring back the little guys. What does this hand actually do? Not cast any spells. That's what it does. What does this hand do? This hand also doesn't cast any spells. Yuck. Not like this deck. Uh, this hand does cast some spells. So what spells do we want and what lands do we want? So we want to keep both of these because that's all of our colours. I think we don't, we can't really keep the dark depths here. And then, are we getting rid of Wasteland, or are we getting rid of the On Thin Ice? I think it's probably the On Thin Ice, just because the Wasteland is like a one-off, so it's going to be hard for us to find. We always talk about it with Wasteland. Hoping we don't get Wasteland ourselves here. We do have Force of Will available, but obviously that doesn't stop a Wasteland. No Wasteland. No one-drop. Interesting. Let's brainstorm now, before the scary guy comes down. Scary guy being Orcish Bowmasters. Okay. I think we do want to draw another one of these lands. Or do we? I could just put this away. Yeah, we'll try this out. We'll go and get the forest here, because that complements the glacial floodplain nicely. Oh no, I've misclicked there horribly. Oh no. Oh, I clicked the wrong land. That is not the first time I've done that, sadly. That's pretty annoying. That is very annoying. Should always make the box bigger. Let's see how bad it is from our opponent's side here. I got a force of wood if they play like a fiend artisan. That probably has to get hit here. This card is just too good. All right. Not really punished there. Let's go and get the snow card forest. Let's actually click on the correct one this time. Pay our exploration. And let's take out there. I think it's the black source because this gives them bow masters, which is kind of annoying into one of our little guys. Although white is the plow man, but they're both white. This is their only green source. Yeah, I think we take out their green source, actually. This stops them making mana dorks. Now, nah, they might just have another land that's irrelevant. But hopefully they don't have anything. And then hopefully we draw a life from alone. A dryad arbor. And a mother of runes. All right. Quite some amount of stuff there. We've got nothing. We did mulligan to five. 
So we're kind of up against it a little bit. All right, Arctic tree line. So they're getting in there with the dried arbor. This suggests to me they didn't have much going on unless they've just got another land and fiend eyes They know they've got no cars in hand, so they don't care about this mother right now. Land and nothing else. Okay. And they probably have a bowmasters looking at the man holding up there. Marit Lazy's slumber. Yes, please. Let's improve the quality of every draw we have. This is going to be our fifth snow pen. We're already halfway there. We'll be there in no time at all. Frost Auger. I think we can do better than that, can't we? It does get us another scry, but put it away. Like Glacial Revelation or Life of the Loam is just way better here. Because Life of the Loam eventually draws us into our combo. And in the meantime, we get to waste our opponent to stop them being able to play anything else. They've got themselves windswept teeth. Oh, they're cracking their windswept teeth. In a basic plane. So the wasteland plan not looking so good. Natural order for three. This is going to be Knight of the Reliquary. Yep. And now they can put us in a wasteland lock. Well, it's not quite a lock. It's like four wastelands, basically. But that's pretty scary for us. All right. Frost Auger. Come on, you human wizard. So this isn't necessarily as bad as it looks. Because when you have Merit Lager Slumber, you quite have to know the top card of your library. So you can sky around it and just guarantee the extra card. And paying one mana to draw a card isn't too shabby. Plowing Frost Auger. That may be one of the first times that's ever happened in a game of Legacy. Alright, they're bashing us for seven. Fiend Artisan. So they have exactly lethal and we need to find something. Session stage is not the one, sadly. Alright, GG's opponent. We did not get there. With the multi five, I think with like a seven card hand, this matchup is not going to be too bad because it's one of the sort of slightly slower decks so we can kind of build our way up but they are a deck that can deal with merit lasers quite easily through plows and caracas so that might prove a little bit more challenging for us so maybe we did better than we actually deserved to in this matchup like we won one game we nearly won the second game to be honest all right let's go to match two all right we have our combo so i think we keep this our opponent's mulligan to five Okay, I think we play out the island first, because that way we can at least make our opponent think about counter spells. So maybe they'll take a little bit longer before going off if they are a deck that needs to go off. I only say that because, generally speaking, if you mulligan quite aggressively, you're more likely to be looking for specific things, which leans towards combo deck rather than a good stuff deck. But let's see. Lotus Petal. Okay. A Chrome Mox. Okay. Simeon's Spirit Guide has entered the Exile Zone. I... Okay. What are we looking at here? If this is a Caves of Chaos Adventure, we very much need to draw a Planes. There it is. Okay, Planes. We need you. This is our opponent's only action, but it is pretty strong. Like This is basically the strongest hand that this deck has, is Turn 1 Caves of Chaos Adventure. So... We're up against it. A Glacial Flood Plane. I guess we have to play it. Because we need to thin ice next turn. And our opponent gets to... They're probably going to go down the Lost Well here. Oh no, they've gone to Forge. That's good for us. That means they're not improving their draws. They're just drawing off the top. What basic did they fetch? Was it Planes? It was a Planes. Yep, so this is going to beat us down for seven. We get to remove it next turn. Touch the Spirit Realm. Is what they've exiled. That's not very exciting. Thankfully. We need to hope that that one card in their hand doesn't do anything. Right, so there's the planes. This strikes me as our opponent having some more business. They got Seasoned Engineer. Archon of Amiria. Well, not as bad as it could be. Let's get rid of this Cozy Cows Adventure. That's step one of our little plan. Then I think we play the Thespian Stage to come in tapped here. And then next turn, we play out... Uh, the forest, so we can play out the Ice Fang. And then turn after we play out the Dark Depths and make a 20 Because we don't care about the Dark Depths being tapped. Now, our Trapper's going to hit us for 5, and then Archon's going to hit us for 2. These are not small increments of damage we are taking. But we have a plan that gets us to win the game. And what more can you really ask? Now, will it win us the game is a, is a very different question. 
So we can play ourselves an Ice Fang that will have Death Touch if we want to kill this. Or we can take the initiative and then make a 20-20. So it really depends what our opponent does here because this stops them going into the uh, Throne of the Dead 3. If they're going to play a creature, I'd like them to do it pre-combat. Chalice of the Void with X equals 1. That is fine. Okay. Our plan here is slightly different to what it was a second ago. We're not going to block this. We're going to take two. We're going to steal the initiative so they don't get thrown in the dead three. And then we're going to make a 2020 to block this guy next time around. Green, blue, boom. Go attacks. Get that sweet, sweet initiative. We got plenty of basics. Go and get. We kind of already have a white source here and we want it. We've got a white source here. Is it blue? Is it green? Let's take a green one here. It doesn't really matter for the most part because we're playing this 2020 making factory. All right, opponent. What is your one card that you've drawn for this turn? Not a big fan of this, but they can't cast a solitude with what they have here. Keep this, make a 2020, block this. They can't cast plow. Touch the spirit realm. That would be annoying. But they didn't. So goodbye, Mr. Chips. Where's your one card in hand opponent? Yeah, we're getting there. All right. Um, crikey. Uh, they're an aggro deck, so Winter's Rest, I guess. God, it's such a bad card. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, Force of Negation can sometimes be good for stopping things like the chalice and force of vigor can also stop the chalice in a different fashion which might be better how much do we care about blood moon maybe a little bit uh, i think we're i'm more likely to bring in force of figures than i am force of negations but i'm even not not really sure about that i don't think this is a match that we have time to be doing merit ages slumber if i'm being perfectly honest with you so that's kind of a clean three for three that leaves us with four eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 blue cards. That should be... Um, oh, wait. Uh, we still need to do some more cuts, right? At the moment, we've only we've put these three in. Uh, Life of the Lone is kind of slow for what we're doing, but it can be nice to set up a lock. If we do need to get rid of a Blood Moon, because we kind of need... Without the Merit Lage's Slumber, we're going to need to be able to blow up a Blood Moon. Which probably means... And trim one of these and get one of these. I want to get rid of any of our creatures. Exploration is one of the few things that allows us to race. Uh, maybe we just get rid of another loan for a force. I will right, try this. Our opponent is favoured, but we can still win this. Uh, what does this hand do? This hand makes a guy and then removes their creature. They've mulliganed. I'll keep this. Making a guy is really important because it allows us to take the initiative. If they play a thing out, we can just remove their guy, get the initiative, and then win using their own mechanic, basically. Like turn one Blood Moon could be annoying. There's a Chromox. Are they making a four drop? They are making a four drop. All right. They are making the good four drop. Okay. So now we're in the, do we make our one one or not? So this is the exact same hand they had last time, plus one card. So we can make our one drop so at least we have something to take the initiative with. I think that's an acceptable approach to this game. Our turn one play, substantially weaker than theirs. But it's just a creature to take the initiative with. Are we going to Lost Well or Forge? Alright, they want to go big. We're trying to dodge Chalice of the Void here. Our Ice Fan can block this Case of Chaos Adventure, but it's not pretty. Right, I'm not blocking here. They could just play out Assuming Spirit Guide. That's not actually that bad. Yeah, they're playing the Spirit Guide. All right. That's not great for us. Force of Will. You're a little bit on the late side. So, what are we doing here? We could w Winter's Rest this Caves of Chaos Adventure. And then next turn that gives us potential to do two things in one turn. Alternatively, we on thin ice this because that's what they're most likely to put chalice on. But that makes green mana more difficult later on down the line, perhaps. 
Um, which means they're probably going to end up pitching this Ice Fang force. Um, so if we go and get the planes here, get rid of this Kaiser Chaos Adventure, that slows them down a little bit. And then we can try and draw an extra card with our Frost Auger. All right, we're going to get trapped down here. Going to take a relatively large chunk out of our life total, put us to six. If they attack with the spirit guy, that means they have another threat, which is obviously awkward for us. But it is what it is. All right, four mana. This is looking like seasoned dungeon here. We cannot allow this to resolve. It is too strong. And I think we are getting rid of the Ice Fang looking at our mana base, which is pretty wild. I think we're supposed to Augur first in case we hit a blue card, actually. So they probably don't attack now. Let's have a look. Uh, let's show them another terrible card. Excellent. Um, we could brainstorm here, but if we miss, it's pretty bad for us. I think the play here is to Winter's Rest their terrible man. Take the initiative. I think we're going to want two blue mana before we want anything else. So we're going to go get this island, and then we're going to play this tree line, and then pass. So hard cast solitude is a thing that we can see here. Um, we could brainstorm first. But I think we're just going to take the scry. Um, quite like the expiration. Sure, I'll take the expiration. All right, so we can play this out. Play this out. Play this out. Go to attacks. Kill this guy. And pass. So we can make our Thespian stage into a basic land if we want to. Right, here comes the solitude. No. No solitude. Interesting. Why are they tapping for it then untapping for it? That's odd. Is this for Theolingus? It is for Theolingus. So if we brainstorm, that doesn't actually get us anywhere, does it? Um... So what can we find off of this? I guess we have to brainstorm, otherwise we're going to lose. Uh, yeah, this is not what I would describe as the one, is it? So this is 10 power. We block two of it, we take lethal here. As long as they remember to turn all their creatures sideways. Seems quite likely our opponent will. Yeah, that was annoying. We were pretty close to winning that game, weirdly. Um, are we supposed to pay more mind to something like Fortheolingus? Maybe the Force of Negations are better to stop those situations. But it's just a thing that can rot away in our hand, though. All right, let's have a couple of Force of Negations. Let's try that. Now, we're obviously starting from quite a disadvantage just by the nature of our deck here and our opponent being, like, I think the second best aggro deck. I think Goblins is actually better than Initiative right now. But it's, it's up there. It's a very strong deck. Hmm... But I believe this was called a little frost auger that could. Uh, I don't think we keep this, but it has some decent interaction. Ah, uh, go on then. It stops our opponent's first scary thing and possibly their second. Our opponent began the game with seven cards in hand, which doesn't fill me with the most amount of joy. Right, I think we have to go and get a basic island here, just in case we get. I guess we got Blood Moon kind of cover, but our non basics don't come into play untapped. And we're kind of hoping this Frost Augur can draw us some cards. Our first Force of Will. Oh, really tempted to hit the Chrome Mox here. Just slow our opponent down in a big way. Attacking the mana is sometimes quite potent against these decks. There's a Caracas. Alright. Okay, okay. Let's have a look. We did not. We can choose if we want to keep that card or not. A Chrome Mox. Is this one bait? This one feels a bit more baity. Let me let it resolve. Maybe I'm going to regret this. But the thing is, Force of Negation doesn't hit that much from our opponent, whereas Force of Will does. Put Caves of Chaos Adventure underneath it. Wow, this. Alright. Um, okay, we have a plan. That plan is pretty wild. But we're going to allow this to resolve, and then we're going to take the initiative by using our Winter's Rest. And basically we're just trying to draw a blue card here. So we'll crack this. We can go and get a green-white land here. It gives us our colours. 
We don't want that Prismatic Vista was on top. Come on, help us out, deck. Give us a blue card. Don't like this pause. It gave us a blue card. You love to see it. I believe it was called the little frost auger that could. Yeah. I think blue is going to be more important. Although having our green and our white on the same land is kind of annoying. So maybe we want white source. That's our removal color. Green source helps us cast our spooky boy little ice fang. Sure, I'm going to get a... We'll play this out in case we draw a Thespian stage next turn. Right. So we've got this Force of Will ready. Who is this? Is this Fourth Eolingus or? Fourth Eolingus X is two. Say no to this. Say no to horses in your area. Interesting, they didn't want to max it out. Maybe they were expecting days. I guess they didn't really know what we're playing because we're on a, a bit of a brew here. It's lost well. Scry 2. Something Ice and Ice Fang. Um, I do want both of these, I believe. So we'll draw the Ice Fang. And then we can activate this to draw the top card of our library because we know that it's an Ice permanent. And then we have removal on the next creature covered. As well as another creature to attack with and take whatever monarchy or initiative our opponent may muster. The Throne of Dead 3, not amazing for us, to be honest with you. But it's a little bit of extra value that we can get if we can maintain possession of this. Are we doing the same again? Feels like we're doing the same again. Simon Spirit Guide on a one-horse show here. A Caves of Chaos Adventure. Okay, that's acceptable. We have a removal spell for that, locked and loaded. This puts them into the Forge or the Lost Well. Let's see which way they want to go. Forge. Power, power, power is what they're after. Let's uh, draw a card. Let's draw another card. Alright. Come on, Thespian Stage or something. An Ice Fang. Okay, that's not the worst, is it? Let's target this one. Okay, white. Boom. Start piling the damage in. If you can call it damage. Uh, I guess we'll take the stash here. Spooky Skeleton's quite nice. I'm a big fan of having that. And we'll play this out. We've got ourselves a little sneaky snake. Archon of Amiria. Play a nice thing. Winter's Rest. Unbelievable. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna keep annoying them. They keep tapping his ancient tomb as well. We get a spooky skeleton now. That's actually a pretty big deal. Brainstorm is quite a nice one here, but we don't get to cast them both, so we cast the brainstorm on our opponent's turn. Goodbye, Archon of Amiria. How many snakes can our opponent? How many? How many horses can they make? One, two, three. They can make three horses, but they have trample, so we're not really blocking them, are we? So we're just going to crash in for a massive three damage. The other option here was to save the auger and then use our brainstorm to maybe set up the auger. But I don't really want to brainstorm with no cards in hand. It doesn't feel very strong. And we might as well wait till our turn if we're looking for something, because all of our answers are sorcery speed. So we get to see a card deeper. We have lethal damage in play. We're going into Throwing the Dead 3 as well. Exciting creature we're going to get. Boom! Frost Auger! <laughs> oh, I'm having a wonderful time. Alright, that's a pretty good draw here. Um, so we go to Tax. Uh, if they play... Yeah, we don't want to walk these into uh, Solitude here. There is the Solitude. So we lose that guy. We take two. That's half our life total. We can hard cast this because of our treasure, so I will brainstorm now. Um, so we can't do both, so we can do either. So we want to leave the Ice Fang on top so we can get it with a Frost Orca. So we probably go Vista Ice Fang. Yeah, so we can Orga 
and then we can also hard cast a force of negation. That should hopefully get us be enough to get us over the line because we have this fat frost auger. All right, a cavern of souls. Choosing Archon. We're only casting one spell anyway. There is an uncountable Archon. Sure. Attack him with a solitude or not. It is a risky, risky proposition. We decided against it. Here's a snake I prepared earlier. We haven't cast any spells yet, so we can cast this little snake. We know our opponent can't cast any spells right now because they're in Archon, so we don't have any worries. So we're going to draw that prismatic end, uh, vista, sorry. We went through that brainstorm very quickly. Right. Uh, the white source, we have one more basic in the deck. A life from the loam. Does that do anything here? Not particularly. Um, my opponent's got one card in hand. I think we just go to attacks here. Uh, these will trade. These will, will trade with the Archon. So they have to block with the Solitude. Which means the Solitude has to die here. And they have to block here. Because this is lethal. Yep. I could have a touch of the Spirit Realm here. That would be pretty good. But actually no it wouldn't because they have to pay two life to do that. So that would be not good. So they gain three but lose two. So they gain one. And we lost one of our guys. But now we get to cast a Brainstorm. Which is always a nice way of... Alright, we've got one of the things we wanted. So then we just put a couple of fetch lands on top. Play out our Thespian stage. Hold up. Hard cast. Force of Negation. As well as just having all the things. Our plan of not counterspelling that Cave of Chaos Venture has done us the world of good. We can probably go into Forge now as well. I'm just going to be... Fourth Eolingus. No, thank you. Blue. One. That's your only spell because of your own Archon of Amiria. So I just beat an initiative player using Winter's Rest and Fort Frost Augur. And this very much was the little Frost Augur that could. Uh, this guy drew us like three cards maybe. And then this bigger brother came and did a load of smashing. So extremely happy with how that round went. And shows that this deck can actually do stuff. So yeah, that's reassuring. Like we were against turn one Caves of Chaos Adventurer. Like, that is a very potent thing to have to play against. And we got there. Alright, let's go to round three. We're one and one. Alright, we're on the play here. We got Frost Augur into Marit Lazer's Slumber. This is kind of what our deck wants to do. It may not be amazing, but it's what we have. Alright. Frost Augur will tell our opponent a lot about our deck because of the cards, the, the text written on Frost Augur. It's very clear what we want to be doing with it. And that is playing Snow Permanence. Or snow cards. You can have snow spells as well. But Frost Augur won us the last game just by being a one mana creature. Right, there's a Flood of Strand. And a Ponder. Okay. So our opponent could be anything here, really. I'm not expecting them to be Delver because they fetched the island. Unless they're Delver with no other mana sources. But that just feels ropey then. They, sh they chose not to shuffle. Uh, to play around, no, I, th I think we're supposed to play this and then save the Prismatic Vista for Brainstorm, but we could play around Stifle, which has been picking up play lately. All right, let's have Marinage's Slumber on the go. Yeah, we're in with the, the janky card. Uh, I don't really want that one. Bam. We're winning the life total race already. I know, I'm getting Doomsday vibes from our opponent. I don't know why. Brainstorm. You know, sometimes you just get a feeling, right? There could be breakfast. That would track with what they're playing as well. They could be ad nauseum tendrils. They can't be the epic storm because the epic storm doesn't run basics. And they don't run ponder in the epic storm. Well, it kind of dips in and out, but generally speaking, the epic storm doesn't run ponder that much. I think the newest build does, actually. But that's not always the case. Right, there's a Marsh Flats and a basic plane. So we're probably looking at... Okay, so it was breakfast. So we probably lose next turn if we don't do something here. I would like to try and brainstorm into an answer of what our opponent's doing. We did not manage to brainstorm into answer 
what our opponent is doing. So what does that mean for us? Hmm. Uh, fetch land, fetch land. Throw away one stage. And I don't really want to get rid of the Glacial Revelation. So maybe we just get rid of a fetch here. We play this. Crack this for planes. Let's scry one. Wasteland. That's not going to help us here. Uh, I don't think we want to be doing that. The the life of Malome here. I think we just want to be getting the exploration going. And then we'll hold up this planes because it looks looks like we can source the plowshares. A round of days, so maybe our opponent will wait another turn. Or maybe they'll just kill us right now. Shuffle Illusionist. Alright. If we had a blue card in hand, then we obviously pop... Sorry, if we have a Force of Will in hand, we pop the Frost Augur first. But let's just see what our opponent's configuration is, and then we'll scoop. If you're unfamiliar with Separate Breakfast, they redirect one damage here, or the next one damage, and they can just do this as many times as they want. Whenever this gets targeted, they mill three. So they mill over the whole deck. Narcomoebus jump out. They make Thassa's Oracle, the classic I win combo these days of Thassa's Oracle jumping out of empty... Jumping out of the graveyard with empty libraries. So it's basically the same win condition as Oops or Spells, but in a different way. All right, so we're seeing Teferi. We haven't seen... Okay, Stoneforge Mystic, actually, is the one. All right, they're going to carry on here. We are dead. We'll, we'll just scoop it up. I just wanted to see if they're on a Mystic build or a Staff. Yeah, you don't need to show us your hand. You, you, you've uh, you smashed us good there. So, four Surgical Extraction. That's a lot of Surgical Extractions. Um, Force of Vigor sometimes does stuff, but not enough that I care. Force of Negation we could bring in just as a way to fight over their counter spells. Um, but is that good enough? What in our deck is less than ideal? Like, Wastelanding our opponent with these Loams is fine. I don't mind the Thin Ice. It gets rid of the stone forge which is quite important I mean, we don't have enough time to leverage some of these things uh, this is the blue card though i'd rather get rid of a loan all right we'll try this don't think we've got the room to bring in the force of negations here okay i'll keep this we're relying on the brainstorm to do some work but we've got two layers of protection and we have a wasteland for Ezra's saga if that's how our opponent wants to approach this one there's a tundra there is a nomads okay um, let's brainstorm. Right, we didn't hit another land. That is a real pain for us. So we'll put back the card that we can't cast here. And, and I guess it's the brainstorm. We can play our wasteland. Are we supposed to be wastelanding our opponent here? I think I want to save the wasteland for as a saga. We have three pieces of interaction with their combo they keep a one lander there all right we will play our we're, we're both on one landers basically all right maybe they do have a as a saga they're trying to bait us into wastelanding their, their tundra there but they already have the nomad so the saga is less of a prize it doesn't allow them to infinite combo it's just the value saga which i think you want to get more lands out ahead of that anyway Right, there's a tundra. Swords to plowshares on our terrible man. Oh no, the one-one beatdown. See, they're like residual combo creatures on their own. Are actually like reasonable compared to some of the things we're doing. All right, let's brainstorm. We found a land. We found two of them. I don't know what to do with myself. I've never seen so many lands. Uh, so frost order is the best thing to pitch to force of will and um, we both want both these lands and then we're going to cast a glacial revelation so i guess we put this on top and then the stage and then we'll play out this forest next turn we can cast glacial revelation or we can just start playing these ice fangs and try and pick off their nomads in combat which is probably the better play here and then once we've used up some cars we can try and Make our way via the Glacier Revelation. Yep, Brainstorm's pretty good. Again, I think we're fighting over the combo rather than 
they're little bits and pieces, but they do have like a whole grip full of stuff. So maybe that goes wrong. And a ponder. That's going to shuffle away that brainstorm. Or right into our trap. Because of how much this card's out of the meta, people don't play around it anymore. Yeah. Picking up one of their combo pieces and run a card. I will take that to the bank. Land would be nice. Not a land. Um, I don't want to tap out of days to being able to pay for days. I think we're just going to hold up this Ice Fang. Because we have interaction coming out of our ears. We also have dazes that we can pay for. All right, so there is the Ezra Saga we were a little bit worried about before. Three mana for Teferi. Um, let's have an Ice Fang. If we don't counterspell this, we never get to counterspell anything. So, Sorry, Frost Augur. Right, let's draw a bunch of cards. I think I'll play out... Mm, we've already got a Thespian stage. I'm just going to play out this snow-covered island. Alright, so the saga's ticking up. So on the next turn, they're probably going to go for the combo. Cabal Therapy. What are you going to name there? They're going to name Force of Will, aren't they? Name's Ice Fang. Interesting. We're going to play a creature and then get rid of our two surgicals. If they do that, we have to surgical their Cabal Therapy in response. A bit annoyed that we lost our Ice Fang there. A Stoneforge Mystic. All right, we still have to hit this Cabal Therapy now. Otherwise, they can take the other Surgical from us. Illusionist, 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 Force of Will. All right. Uh, they brought anything interesting. A couple of endings. Cauldra is almost certainly what they're fetching here. And then you can use the... They can use the Saga to get Shuko. Okay. Prone's got some amount of stuff over there. So this probably gets them a cauldra. And then they get the shook off the Ezra Saga. Our one piece of protection is no longer going to cut it. We had to hit the Teferi when it came earlier. Oh, they got Shuke. They're just going to play the Shuke. Okay, so next turn they have two separate illusionists we have to worry about. That is mildly problematic for us. Um, there's no point getting this life from the loan back because they already have the combo. So I think we are on Glacial Revelation time and we want to leave back blue, white, I think. Yuck. Just one card there. All right. I think our opponent is going to win this game. They will just force of will our surgical. However, if they draw the Thassa's Oracle, then they can't win because they can't discard the Thassa's Oracle because we took their Cabal Therapy. So there is that line available to us. So it's not all over Clover. It just feels like that. All right, they drew a fetch land, so they should be absolutely locked for winning here. There it is, an Illusionist. Yeah, our opponent's got a Force of Will in hand. I don't think it's worth playing on. I'm not going to insult my opponent's intelligence and say they might misclick it. All right, uh, we're one and two, but we got a win on the board again in a real game against a real deck, so that's something. All right, let's get around four. This hand requires us to draw a land. Are we on the little frost auger that could? Any land? Uh, I don't think I should be keeping this, but I've got a. Well, we need to get a little bit jamming with our deck, right? So. Let's get our Frost Augur up and running. There it goes. Maybe our opponent's uh, an initiative deck. They play some big guy. We draw planes. On thin ice, their guy. And then the rest is history, right? But if we draw land, we can knife them alone. And then we don't have to worry about land ever again. Coming to play tap jewels are really upsetting to play. There's a Sangha. Okay. Just straight out like that. It's like combo mode. Alright, deck. Uh-oh. We've made a boo-boo. Why can you just giving us a fetch land? Bloodstained Mire. So this is probably Red Black Painter. Or it could be some sort of Saga Storm splashing red for Burning Wish. Plateau. Okay, so it's Red White Painter then. Yeah. 
All right. Come and get your force of vigors. Your name, Red. Interesting. That can turn on furies. So we knew we weren't drawing that this time. Let's see if we can draw something good this time. If our opponent has a land, we lose the game. And all of our cards look pretty funky because of the painter. So it was a land. Yeah, we kept one land and got punished. Now, if we drew the land here, we could interact a little bit on thin ice and stuff. Show us the land. All right. So that was horribly just awful. Um, I like these things. Force was so bad in the Pyroblast matchup where they're just playing around it the whole time. So I don't really want to just get into that trap. Uh, Marinage's slumber is kind of slow, but I think it's acceptable. The Ice Fang's fine. The Revelation's fine. It's really hard to trim it. Like, it probably should be the Frost Augers, right? This is not a matchup where they're really going to be doing that much. It is kind of awkward boarding out this force, but I think it's correct. Like, if our opponent's a good painter player, like a decent painter player, they won't lose to Force of Will. But if they're a bad player, we should probably try it. Well, maybe with our deck, it might be difficult for us to win anyway. But, okay. Um, this is a little bit of interaction. We've got a Dark Depths. This is slow. This is real slow. I wish this was a forest. I'm going to keep it. Painted decks are usually pretty poor versus Merit Lage. I don't really have ways of di interacting with it. So hopefully we can punish them for that. I would love to draw a forest, please. Or a on thin ice. We did not draw it. I'm going to play out the Thespian stage. There's planes from our opponents. And a Goblin Engineer. So Surgical Extraction now looking good. What are you going to put in there? A Grindstone, sure. So we can Surgical Extract all of their Grindstones. That's pretty handy to have. So this turn, we deploy the Forest. I think we just go and get that now. Do we have any one drops that we can actually play here? No, so we can play in our opponent's turn. Next time we make a Merit Lage. We can wait for the en for the Engineer to actually sacrifice something. Because this is sacrificed as a cost, not exchange. And our opponent isn't going to mess with our hand or anything by the nature of what their deck does. A Painter's Servant, you say. Our opponent doesn't have any artifacts in play right now, so I think we're going to... Take out all their grindstones right now. Right, so we've got four Theolingus, a Braid, Fury. Got some Furies in here, another four Theolingus, some Red Blasts, the Dragon Engine, some Plows. All right, this build's going to be better against it, but they don't have it in hand now, so there is that. Right, they've named Red, so they can pitch whatever to Fury. Do I want to trade my Ice Fang into this? I'm not not opposed to doing that. Looking at what they have in hand. Wait, what? Oh, we don't. We don't have three types, do we? I'm so used to just having it on this deck. I've made a horrible error there. Yikes! I'm probably thinking, who is this clown that we're playing against? But we might just be able to win if they don't draw a source to plow shares right now. That's what we're dodging. There's a plateau. They could four theolingus for one here. But then we can block that. Actually, no. One of their... They get to make one... They get to draw one card here. So this just says whenever you deal damage. So they will get to draw one card here. So they, they have a... 4 in 46 chance of drawing a... Source to Plow Shares. Do you get it? Let's go attacks. Alright, they didn't get it. Okay. So we did see a bunch of Pyroblast still, as expected. Fourth Orlingus is kind of an interesting one. Makes you more inclined to run something like a Force or a different Force. But again, I don't think we want to do that. I think we just want to stop the combo and then kind of answer their bits and pieces. I just don't want to play into all these Red Blasts. Though. They feel so bad for us. All right. It is awkward. Maybe we are supposed to run the forces instead of these Merit Lages slumbers. 
but the painter matchups can get quite grindy if you take out their quick win, which is what I'm hoping to do. They're also a deck that can play painter and then red blast our land with on thin ice on it, which is going to be horrible for us because that's going to be a two for one and get their guy back. So kind of like a three for one almost. We don't really have any interaction here. We're going to have to mug on this. Um, we have some interaction. We've got a decent chunk of interaction, actually. I will keep this. One of these cards got to go back. It's probably one we can't cast. As sad as that is. Brainstorm is going to have to do the work for us. Well, that's pretty good. Our plan is to make this planes on turn one, I guess. Just get rid of this painter servant while we can. We're going to be a bit slow on the old blue mana here because of Glacial Floodplain. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, that's a good card. Certainly better than almost all of the cards in our deck. <laughs> Alright, come on deck. Uh, okay, I guess we're playing this. It's fine when you're fetching them with spare mana, but it is a bit ugly when you have to do this. What is this going to be? Just a welder. I think our opponent's probably going to be on, yeah, there's the beatdown plan. I think that is better for them. And this is going to generate them some tokens, and they're going to have a big fourth year lingus, and we're going to be really sad. A grindstone. Okay, so if they ever get rid of our on thin ice, we lose. There's a welder. Right, let's brainstorm. None of these are wastelands, which is a shame. Uh, I think we'll put back some fetchables. We want a blue source here, and we also want to make sure we have green sources in the future, so this gets us a blue source now. I think the Frost Orga here is slightly better than just bringing back the one Flooded Strand. Obviously, we could have played a fetch and brought back two things. Maybe we should do that and try and race to depths here. But we're two turns away from doing depths anyway. We kind of need to draw some business. I don't want to be sat there dredging life from the loom. We're already making our land drops as well. This reflection Kikijiki is going to really amp up the pain. Fourth of the X equals three. That's a lot. That is a lot. Yep, kind of wish we were playing Dead of Winter in our deck now. Right, so this is two, four, six, eight. They get the Monarch. We're going to need a Miracle here. Misty Rainforest is in it. I think we are done here. I guess we can draw a card here, maybe. Alright, that's something. Cracks goes to green source. Throw this one down. Maybe we can draw a removal spell. We did not draw a removal spell. So, two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven damage. We get to block two of that, so we're dead. Yeah, I didn't really feel great. We kind of needed to draw some of our. Well, I think the fourth Eolingus pivot is just too strong out of the. This is the first time I actually played against it. I know I've been keeping track of Lightwalker, who this may be, you know, Lightwalker, Light Slider, might be a connection to those accounts. But I think the build is really good. I think Fourth Eolingus is just incredibly strong. All right, uh, let's go the final round and see if we can get a 2 3 going. All right, our hand plays Magic the Gathering. We will keep this. Cavern of Souls. Goblin. Okay. A high progressive matchup. A nice force of will just in time. Play Exploration. Plays Flooded Strand. So we can pop it if we need an island. And then we can get planes off of the Vista. Right, stick a goblin. We can't count a spell. Oh, it's just a Rabble Master. Okay, we have an answer for that. I have a question here. Am I supposed to try and look for another blue card? I don't think so. I think we just leave this as our force of will food. Although I think our opponent's going to try and do it uncountably. So I think the play here is Prismatic Vista. Crack this for a basic. Uh, we'll go get a green one. No, actually we're going to use the green from this, right? So you go get a plains and an island. We'll get these two cards back and play this. Crack it for green. Play another one. Play this. We're comboing off, we're just not really doing anything, are they? Let's uh, get rid of this Rabble Master. And now we're just kind of hoping to not get killed by Muxus. 
So what they might be doing is waiting till this turn to stick a goblin and then have a counterable Muxus. Sorry, an uncounterable Muxus. Goblin ringleader that we can't counter. All right, that's acceptable. Battlecry lackey ringleader. Okay, that's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five. Let's get this is a blue source. We can get more blues that way. Right, I think I'm going to cast a brainstorm here. These can go on top. We're going to draw step. We'll dredge them over with life from the loam. And wait, we're not going to have enough. Oh, we already we have the blue cards here, don't we? Uh, we crack this first. We can get Arctic Tree Vine. No, we need blue ones, don't we? So we'll get the floodplain here. Let's go and get these two back. Hold up the one that looks like a plow. Cut some more lands. And pass. What is your uncountable goblin of choice here, opponent? Battlecry Goblin might be the best here, because that just allows them to beat for three, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we're dead on the next turn, so that's pretty horrible news for us. Well, they're not going for the max damage line, that's interesting. Goblin Matrons, that gets them the Muxus or the Sticker Goblin. Okay. All right, I'm just going to strip the Sticker Goblin now. Nope, this guy that we can't count, so sure. Like, I think we're supposed to be fetching lands here, but... Rhinewood Falls, crack this. Anything we can dredge life from the loam here. If we find... Uh, what do we find here? If we find Thespian Stage Dark Depths and play that, our opponent has lethal on board around that. So we block here, and we take three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine from this guy. So Life Alone can't bail us out of this one. So we need to take a regular draw here. Brainstorm. Let's see what we can find. No to replacement effects. Uh, that's us dead. We're, we're dead on board to what they have. So, All right, again, I wish we had Dead of Winter, but we don't. Uh, winter's Rest. And we're probably too slow to do Marit Lady's Slumber stuff. We're, we're definitely too slow to be doing Life from the Loam things here. Um, don't mind having the Wasteland, though. I guess we get rid of a Frost Augur. Let's try and make a Marit Lady on turn two. We haven't done turn two Marit Lady yet, which is sad. Oh, pretty close to turn two Marit Lage, but we don't really have any interaction. And we'd just be relying on the top of our deck. I think we can do better. Um, okay. Uh, we can keep this. What do we get rid of here? It's probably the Frost Augur, isn't it? We're on the play, so we just go and go and get one of our um, dual lands. Probably the, the blue-white one. And then we can, like, Thin Ice a Lackey or something. Cavern of Souls. Goblin. And nothing. Let's crack this. Glacial Flood Pain. A Thespian's Stage. Are we casting... I think we are casting a Brainstorm here. Because we're probably not going to get many other windows to cast or resolve a Brainstorm. Alright, I guess we're just stacking stages on top of our library at this point. Uh, we'll play this, and then we can crack it at end step for another jewel. And then we have access to Winter's Rest and On Thin Ice to buy us a turn to get to our 2020. So whatever our opponent puts into play this turn, we will try and kill. Okay. Uh, we don't care about that. Sure. Um, Rhinewood Falls. Probably Rhinewood Falls, isn't it? Should we play this out? Yeah, you can unlicense her. I think our opponents misread this matchup a little bit and thought we were more like a lands deck than we actually are. Like, if they just did their A plan, I think they just smash us. But maybe we have the time. A name sticker goblin that we cannot counterspell. Okay, but we can counterspell the next thing. So. Please don't hit six mana. Four mana, that's a nice low roll for us. Though what's like nice about goblins is four mana gives them like two drop and pump or ringleader. So it's still pretty reasonable a lot of the time. Goblin deck is sweet. There's the ringleader. So we're gonna go blue, green, try and get a cantrip going first. Just in case we hit the force of will that is in our deck. 
Uh, nope, okay. War Chief, Prospector, Matron. I think we can beat that. We have two blockers. One of them is a 2020. They didn't attack, even though our guy doesn't have Death Touch. That's interesting. And that was just a mistake there. All right. There is our Dark Depths. We have a 2020 on the phone. Can you beat that? Horrible feeling our opponent can beat that. Stick a goblin that we can't count a spell. Sure. Is this going to be a high or a low roll? A middle roll. Five. Okay. Skeletic Prospector. So now they can Matron and then Muxus. And then Muxus has to be good enough to beat us now through two blockers. Which is certainly possible. Here comes big old Muxus. Battlecry Goblin, Bombardier, a bunch of things. I don't have the mana to do anything else here. This isn't lethal, because we can block Muxus and we can then block the next biggest guy. So we're only taking two, four, six, plus another eight, which is a lot of damage, but not lethal. All right, let's make a 2020. Yeah, okay, okay. One more game. Um. Yeah, I think we're just going in as is. Curious if our opponent's going to board out those unless it's hearses or not. It's not like we're supposed to bring in Force of Vigor to help versus potential Blood Moons. But I think we're just going to Force of Will and hope for the best. Maybe we should have some Hydroblast in the sideboard. That would have certainly been useful in some of the games we've played today. A lot of them, in fact. We played three red decks, I think, so... Uh, our hand doesn't really work, so we have to mulligan this. We have a counter spell for their first scary thing. We can kind of go up the chain, but we are a little bit slow, but I think this is acceptable. I think we need to keep the exploration, which means we're probably bottoming the frost auger here. No play from our opponent on turn one. That's reassuring. Hopefully they just play like an unlicensed test. All right, we've got two ice fangs. That's not nothing. Maybe we're not supposed to keep this exploration, but that's the thing that's going to allow us to like brainstorm into our combo and be able to win the game. A okay, Rabble Master. How scared of Rabble Master am I? I have the Ice Fang. I think I can live with this. We do have to take one more hit from this, though. But I have no cavern, and I don't want to get killed by Muxus, as you can probably imagine. We would like to draw a land here. We did not draw a land. Um... I think we're supposed to brainstorm looking for a green land. Right, there's a green land. Um, okay, so we put back this and hmm, is the other Winter's Rest? I think the Ice Fangs are better than Winter's Rest. So this goes and gets us a basic forest. And then we can play this and then this lets us get ahead of our current play tap lands now. And we can brainstorm into our combo. But we only have the one blue source, so that is a little bit of a risky play. Cavern of Souls, yuck. That's terrible news for us. Stick a goblin. Another rabble master. Kinda wish we counted the first one now, but sure. It's just gonna be one of those games we get punished for holding this force of will. So this guy is gonna be a big old rabble master. Yep, yeah, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that puts us to ten, right? If I can do maths. I can do maths, okay. I was actually watching just in case I couldn't do maths. Uh, all right. Um, a blue source would be reassuring here. A wasteland. We play an ice fang block here. That's okay. We brainstorm. We possibly play two ice fangs instead. Or we can... We can waste sand out our opponent's Cavern of Souls. Deploy one of these guys, so blue, green. If we draw the land now, then we can... Right, we drew a land. Not quite the one we want, but we have a counter spell, and then we just need to try and make our guy. So... Oh no, this is, le this is still lethal, right? How many of these goblins are doing? Two. So three, six, nine... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yeah, this is lethal. We're just completely dead here. 
this is a good example why I think Goblins is better than the Initiative deck. Because their mana base is better. Their caverns are much better. They aren't as much all in on a play, but their all in plays are even more explosive than the Initiative and quite often just win the game. Uh, this is just us super deadsville. We're just, uh, let me see quite how dead we are, just to show you the sheer power of what's happening right now. But yeah, like I said, so Goblins uh, is also a deck that goes wide, so like a piece of removal doesn't undo them. Whereas if we remove one initiative guy, we kind of get absolutely rocked. We can, we can absolutely rock them. Right, so yeah, so we took out the biggest attacker and still ended up at minus six. Um, so we would have drawn one more card with a brainstorm. Yeah, the brainstorm wasn't going to get us there either. Yep, sadly we finished 1-5. So we finished 3-2 with this last year, and a lot's changed since then, as you can probably tell, which gives us some good stuff to talk about, though. So let's jump right into that. So in many leagues today, I was like, oh, I wish we had Dead of Winter, and we didn't. I also think that the mana base here with the come to play tap lands is more punishing than it once was. So when we played this last time, Loads of people were playing a lot slower decks, right? The format wasn't as fast as it is now. There wasn't goblins running around. Obviously, um, I think the initiative was still about at that time as well. But I think a lot of decks have just gotten more streamlined. And there's been lots of big printings that have impacted Legacy. You know, like the Lord of the Rings set, for example, has changed Legacy quite a lot. Like, it's made Ice Fang just a worse card, right? This card is no longer doing what we really want it to do. So it does beg a question of what colour should our deck be? Because like the Anthony Ice is very good, but we are splashing pretty much just for this. If we got rid of the Anthony Ice and played black instead, then we can have access to some hand disruption instead of Force of Wills, which don't require as much uh, commitment card-wise. So that's kind of interesting. We get Dead of Winter. And I think we need to just rework the mana base. We need four Prismatic Vistas and then some other Fetch Hands and just go fully into Basics. And I think that's probably going to be the stronger way of approaching the mana base for this. Obviously, Winter's Rest, not really uh, a very good card. But we did win a round because of Winter's Rest and the little Frost Augur that could. So, you know, we'll take our wins where we can get them with this deck. But I think... This is an example of how Legacy is definitely a format where you can do a lot of brewing and messing around in. But over the last year, the format has changed in a way that this sort of brew is is not great. Whereas like the mono white brew we played a couple of weeks ago is actually in an all right spot where a lot of its permanents are very good because there are a lot of creature decks and things around. So you can just play that sort of lumbering white control a little bit better than you could in the past, I think. So, you know, positives and negatives with the format shifting, but Legacy is a very deep format. I think what we're doing here is, you know, the best thing we can do is turn one exploration, turn two marital age, which is very strong. We never got to do that. Uh, I think last time we played, we did that a few times, and that certainly helped us get some Ws on the board. But I think this deck needs a little bit of an overhaul. So, like, the thing that's, that makes this deck really cool is the Glacial Revelation. It lets you dig pretty deep and do some pretty cool stuff. And then you have the the the, pro the problem with Glacial Revelation, though, is when we're casting this, we need to have enough snow permits in our deck, right? So, on the ice is something it can hit. So this can actually go and find you removal, you know, of a sort, I suppose. Whereas if we're playing Dead of Winter, Glacial Revelation doesn't do that, which then says, okay, maybe we're not supposed to be a Glacial Revelation deck if we're we're sort of removing those things. So let's just see how many actual snow permanents we have. Um, if we exclude the on thin ice, if we're turning to a black deck. So let's move these across. Take these basics out over here. Got the four depths. And then the four augers, who were okay today. So we have 23. So this is probably just going to be drawing us two cards. But the rest do go in the graveyard. So it does enable loam. So maybe we could do something like that. Uh, the other option as well is to play the Uros like I mentioned. 
And what Uro does is if we're milling a bunch, that's really going to help with the Uro. So if we miss, we still get value because we're hitting life from low and we're hitting Uro. And Uro is something that can actually win us the game. Now, again, that does play into Caracas, which isn't really our friend. But I think having the Wasteland as an option does change that. So maybe, maybe we could try just a straight blue-green build. And instead of having on thin ice, this just goes away. We get ourselves some Uros. And maybe jam some more Wastelands in the deck. And we try and Wasteland lock people a bunch. Maybe that is a more interesting approach for this one. What I really want is another set printed with snow permanence in, really. That's, that's kind of what we need. That would make a real difference. But against some of these aggro decks, it's always going to be tricky. But I guess what we should be doing is packing a bunch of Hydro Blasts. That's probably the removal we do want. Obviously, Glacial Re Revelation doesn't fetch that. But, you know, you can't have everything. So, yeah, I feel the, the coming to play tap lands were really bad today. They weren't so bad last time we played this deck. And we never got to do the turn two dream. Things weren't really going our way. But we did have that really sweet match against the initiative deck. Which uh, for me was worth playing this entire league. And there was a lot of good learning here about how the format shifted. To sort of make these slightly deadly things a little bit worse. And obviously Ice Fang being worse is kind of annoying. But I don't think we can take out blue. Well we can't take out blue because the whole point of the deck is Marit Legion Slumber right? So we can't do that. Uh, but we... And we don't really want to take out green because like graceful, graceful revelation is the other thing. So the only other color we can take out is the white. And we can replace that with red or black. Red gives us the... It's a shock that becomes a lightning bolt, I think, if you're snowy, which is pretty poor because we can just play lightning bolt. Um, and it doesn't hit players, I don't think, either. Uh, there is a four mana... No, a three mana, four damage spell that has some other text if you've done some snow mana into it, I think. But I can't quite remember what that is. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with this. I think maybe we need to readdress what we're doing colour-wise, have some more utility lands in the wastelands, and then jam in some arrays. Uh, I don't think we can run this many cute cards anymore. I think we need to have a few less cute cards if we want to run this one. So... No coming to play tap lands. Maybe Frost Augur has got to say goodbye. Although the little Frost Augur that could is probably what I'm going to name this video because that was the highlight for me. Cyborg was fine, but we probably wanted some Hydro Blast in there. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. And I will put the link in the description to the previous time I played this where we actually ended up with a positive record and the games were much more interesting on the whole because they went well for us. And I thought it was quite a good one. So check that out. There's a whole playlist actually from last December. I think it's only 12 videos. We didn't go quite as hard last year because so I didn't have enough time to prep because I'd only really just started making content in September last year. So it was a little bit hard getting it all done, but now I'm sort of more scheduled and stuff. So it's a lot easier for me to do it all. All right. Uh, remember to like and subscribe. Check out some of the other videos I mentioned if you're interested. Um, and I'll see you next time around. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel. A mid tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way please check out the link in the description.